So Paul, what was it like recording Amy Lee's vocals for the Evanescence record you did with Nick Raskulinitz? You know, Nick has a process for recording vocals. So I had to work on a day off. He had to, he had to, you know, take a day off. So it was just me and Amy. And, you know, basically she sings it great the first time. She is spot on. But now I'm going for attitude or vibe and like an emotion. So she'll sing it. Nick's like, dude, just have her sing it like 10 times. But out of those 10 takes, I'm creating the double and a triple. And they're all locking together. And if you pan that stuff around, it's pretty impressive sounding. You have to have a great singer that can lock, you know, lock with themselves in pitch and time. And it just comes out like it's, it's, it's here, it's there, and it's over there. And it's pretty massive sounding. She's amazing. I mean, like, so Amy is just very honed in on music. Like she's, like she knows every note that go, that's going by. Like it's there for a reason. And, uh, and this is the thing that really impressed me with her. And this is where I like, all of a sudden I was like, wow. I studied in college and I went to uh, jazz school and, and, you know, so I had to read music and do all that stuff and jump through all those hoops. And, uh, you know, so we're in New York recording strings for the record. And we had David Campbell put this ensemble together. It was like 14 piece orchestra or, you know, small. And she goes out there and she's discussing the score with him and she grabs a pencil. You have to watch out for this. And she's just putting the marks on the score as it goes, you know, and I was like, holy smoke, she is super legit. I'm like, all right, you win. Like, you know, you're, you're legit and you, you're a great singer and, you know, you understand what's happening and, uh, every step of the way. So uh, I, I, I highly respect Amy Lee. It's funny because, uh, when she gets into like, you know, like adding keys, like synthesizers and keys and the MIDI stuff, she moves so fast. Like she works so fast. She's like, okay, I need this. I need that sound. I need this. And, and Nick's like, dude, you get in there. And I'm like, all right, cool. And I'm just like, boosh, 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 boosh. And it's super fun because she knows what she's going for and she's, and she's trying to get there. I don't, it's like, go, I want to record right now. So she, I feel she was doing the same thing. You know, I, it's like the way I, my analogy is, it's like music is like, you're just constantly pulling everything out of your head. It's not, it, you're not looking at all of it. It's it's coming out like like floss almost. And I, I just, you know, so Amy Lee is kind of doing that. That's awesome. What's she like to hang with? Oh, she's super nice and sweet and funny. <laughs> she's got Will Hunt in the band. And, and Will Hunt and Nick Raskin likes. And, uh, you know, he's another Sound City guy. And he's like one of the most hilarious people I've ever worked with. And it, that's why we get along so great. Truth be told, Evanescence isn't my first like go-to, yeah. I didn't truly understand the band. It was kind of off my radar, but you know, Nick's like, you know, dude, we're gonna do an Evanescence record. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> so you mentioned that Amy was present for the orchestral recordings for the record. In general, what was the orchestral experience like? We were supposed to, we were gonna record the strings to tape. So we had two reels, we got up to New York and they could not keep the lock. Like they had Simpty time code amplifiers. They had, you know, the techs were working the night before and, and, you know, they're like, oh, it'll be set up by, you know, first thing, you know, you'll be solid, you know, first thing tomorrow. And we get up there and, you know, we've got the bows are up in the air and this is like the third take and the lock keeps getting longer and longer. And finally, like the bows are up and I can hear, the, you know, it's like one, two, and I'm like, abort. I'm like, I don't have lock. And it's like, I've got musicians out there that need to get to, you know, Book of Mormon and Spider-Man and wherever, you know, anything on Broadway at the time. It's like, they don't have time to waste on this tape machine. So we just pulled all the patches, went straight to Pro Tools and just went ripping from there. So it was just one less thing to worry about. That's smart. So the string sessions took place in New York. Where was the rest of the record recorded? That was like 14 weeks in Nashville at Blackbird. So we were Blackbird Studio D just for 14 weeks. And I remember all the uh, other like country guys would come in. It's like, hey, what's going on in there? You know, because those guys usually, hey, the assistant engineer sets up at eight. The band comes in at nine. They're they're done by noon of a, like the whole record, you know? So, and they use everything on the console. But Nick and I, you know, we came up at Sound City. We like to build rock records. And it's like you build rock records with different mic pre's and compressors and different stations. Hey, that's this guitar sound and that's going to be that guitar sound. And, you know, and we take our time, make, you know, having the artists like paint 
what's going to happen on on the record you know it's not just like all right we got the twangy thing there we got this thing here and you know and lots of respect for all those talented musicians because when it goes down it sounds like the record right but they're just blown away by like like we're dug in we're staying here for 14 weeks until it's done and we're gonna use all this equipment every single day <laughs> so we're in the studio d and it's got like it's like the world's largest api console it's like 96 inputs and then uh then you've got like all these vintage neves all these vintage apis vintage helios you name it it's like they've got it and you know they got tons of 251s and any mic that you can think of hey do you have one of those oh yeah we got one of those and you know so yeah, it, it was just such an amazing place to work, and and uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to work at places like that. That you know, working with bands that have a budget, because nowadays it's like just getting a band that has a little bit of a budget. It's like, hey, well, I know a great place you can get all that stuff done. So.